Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we're going to do something a bit unusual for this channel and dive into the wonderful world of speculation. Now generally I don't like to cover this sort of thing because theories make up something like 99% of every other One Piece channel on YouTube. But in this particular case, it's just a little bit too intriguing to avoid. And that may admittedly be because it involves one of my favorite characters. And because this idea is pretty damn out in the open and practically on the verge of being confirmed by Oda himself before it has even been put potentially revealed. Before we get started though, I want to say that this video will include some very, very minor spoilers of the Wano arc. I really don't think anything I'm going to say here today is going to impede your enjoyment of Wano if you aren't caught up with the manga or ruin any particular moment. In fact, pretty much the only thing I'm going to be talking about is a very simple name. No plot points, no action, not a whole lot of anything really, but I figured I'd just give you that little warning anyway, just because. But with that out in the open, let's proceed to discuss the idea of is Zoro from Wano. Or I suppose the more accurate question would be, is Zoro a descendant of an individual from Wano? But that doesn't make quite as snappy of a title for a video, sadly. Now this idea has been spoken of at great length ever since the existence of Wano was made known to the fan base. A famed land of samurai and a sword paradise, it would only make sense for Zoro to feel very much at home in such a place. However, leaping into the Wano arc has taken this from mere outrageous speculation to an incredibly likely possibility. And it has been done, as I mentioned before, through one simple word, that word, being Shimotsuki. Thus far in the Wano arc, we have been introduced to two characters who bear the name Shimotsuki. And I won't go into who they are because one of them is, it's a bit of a potential spoiler, but they were both fairly high ranking officials prior to this whole Kaido business and very, very well known in the history of the island. Now, why is this important in any way? Well, it's because Shimotsuki also just so happens to be the name of the village where Zoro grew up and was trained in the art of swordplay. Now, having gone on for over two decades now, we have seen instances where names in One Piece have been used more than once like Suru and Suru or Pudding and Pudding. But in each of these situations, the doubling up of the name has been inconsequential. Whereas the linking of the Shimotsuki name between a dojo in East Blue and a famed clan of samurai on Wano seems a little bit too perfect to be a coincidence. Furthermore, the Shimotsuki shenanigans don't stop there. As we turn our gaze to the Thriller Bark booster pack of the One Piece Vivia card data book, and here it was revealed that the legendary samurai Ryuma, who lived literally centuries ago, well, his full name is Shimotsuki Ryuma, a man who just so happened to look exactly like Zoro, by the way. However, let's not put too much stock into that right now, because from a meta perspective, we know exactly why that is. It's because the one-shot manga Monsters, which Ryuma was featured in, was published long before the character of Zoro came to fruition, so it was more than likely a repurposed design. And hey, you know what? Even if we disregard that, there's a billion people in the world out there who look like Nami. So for now, let's just add it to the pile of speculation and build our mountain of evidence. But here's the thing that is absolutely undeniable, and it comes from a most unlikely character by the name of Minotomo. Now just stay with me for a bit here, but this little chap was invented as a joke character in a very early SBS segment to explain a particular continuity error in which a destroyed door appeared to be perfectly fixed in a subsequent panel. And of course, this occurred in East Blue. Now, Minotomo would then go on to appear in Wano, which naturally resulted in another SBS question inquiring as to if this was the same Minotomo who appeared in East Blue. A very valid question, considering how unlikely it would be for him to travel all the way into the Grand Line, much less the New World, and much, much less make it to Wano. And the answer to this question is where things get real crazy, because Oda responded, with the following. Yes, he is. Back then, he was fixing the broken door to the bar in Fushu Village. He was introduced as Carpenter Minotomo-san, exclaiming, who did this? And now he somehow ended up in the new world in the closed border country of Wano. Isn't that weird? That's right, they actually aren't the same person. They have the same last name because they're related by blood. The fact of the matter is a ship from Wano reached East Blue a few decades ago. One of the descendants of someone on that ship is a person that everybody is familiar with. This part might be featured later in the main story, so I won't mention any more than that. It isn't going to be a major plot line, it will just be a minor story. And just, wow. Out of nowhere, it honestly feels like Oda has practically confirmed that Zoro is the descendant of one of the travelers who came from Wano to East Blue. But just let's hold on a second. Minotoma being confirmed is one thing, but how do we know that Shimotsuki Village was populated by the travelers of Wano? I mean, at the moment, all we have is the name coincidence, yeah? Well, no. As it turns out, we have a fair bit more than that because if we take a look at Zoro's sensei, Koshiro, or more specifically, the dual blade symbol on his attire, well, it matches the ones we've seen on other characters during the Wano arc. Furthermore, getting into a very minor 
manga event that has yet to be animated, there is eventually a scene where Momonosuke is training and he shouts out a word that he learnt directly from Zoro, which has been roughly translated as snatch. However, Kiku then informs Momonosuke that this is a taboo word in an old dialect and goes on to state that it may just be a coincidence that Zoro uses it. But as we know in most simple media, stating the possibility of something being a coincidence is more often than not narratively intended to highlight the very fact that it isn't. But the only place Zoro could have learnt such a word would be Shimotsuki Village, which once again just so happens to hold the exact same name as a famed line of samurai. Now I will say that this does not necessarily prove that Zoro is a descendant of Wano. He could have been a simple East Blue child that got caught up in the art of the sword and was taught the ways of a samurai. Really the strongest piece of evidence we have to support Zoro being from Wano are Oda's words. One of the descendants of someone on that ship is a person that everybody is familiar with. Now to me that statement actively eliminates characters like Koshiro or Kuina from being the person that Oda is referring to. I mean yes Koshiro and thus Kuina are almost certainly descendants of Wano folk anyway, but they're not characters that I'd say everybody is familiar with. This series has gone on for more than two decades and there are going to be a lot of people out there who have missed or even forgotten about Koshiro and Kuina. However, I can say with full certainty that everybody is familiar with Zoro. Add that to the fact that Zoro looks exactly like Shimotsuki Ryama, the idea he comes from a village founded by Wano citizens, and you know what, even his bright green hair adds evidence to this idea, because bright and vibrant hair does seem to be a trademark feature of Wano's inhabitants. Look, it would honestly not surprise me if in the near future, Zoro's full name was revealed to be Shimotsuki Zoro, in the same way that Sanji was revealed to be Vince Smoke Sanji. Because with that move, Oda proved that it is never too late in the game to make world changing revelations about characters that we are ever so familiar with. Now with that, I should also go on to highlight the fact that Oda went on to say, this part might be featured later in the main story, so I won't mention any more on that. It isn't going to be a major plotline, it will just be a minor story. So look, if these heavy, bordering on confirmed hints do become blatantly stated in the series, it is not going to be a huge deal in the grand scheme of Wano. It's not like Zoro is going to find out that he's a descendant of Ryama and then go on some sort of quest to fulfill his destiny. No, he's still here to take down Kaido along with the Alliance. So while this may have some interesting implications, I highly doubt that it will become a huge focus at any point during the arc. It's more of a nice connecting of the dots which is something that this series is so fantastic at. But finally, once again, I have to say that as much as I'm not a huge fan of making theories or posing speculation to all of you, this is just a bit too much to ignore. And at this point, I would be much more surprised if Wano ends with Zoro not having been revealed to be a descendant of one of their citizens. But that pretty much does it for this discussion on whether or not Zoro is from Wano. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own thoughts on this whole Zoro Wano business. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.